so it is, in fact, uh, my pleasure and privilege to be here today and this evening to administer the oath uh, to Paul Penzone. My name is Mary Mergia. I'm a United States Circuit Judge for the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals. I have known Paul for some time now and have known him to be a dedicated public servant. Previously, I know he will undertake his duties with uh, all of the responsibility that we would hope that one who is about to undertake the oath of sheriff would want to. And uh, so it's a privilege for me to administer the oath, especially in the presence of his wife and son and all of you. So without further ado. If you could please repeat after me. I, Paul Penzone. I, Paul Penzone. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will support. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. The Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution and laws of the state of Arizona. And the Constitution and laws of the state of Arizona. That I will bear true faith and allegiance. That I will bear true faith and allegiance. To the same. To the same. And defend them against all enemies. And defend them against all enemies. Foreign and domestic. Foreign and domestic. And that I will faithfully. And that I will faithfully and impartially and impartially discharge the duties discharge the duties of the office of the office of county sheriff of county sheriff according to the best of my ability according to the best of my ability so help me God so help me God Sheriff Paul Penzone congratulations <laughs> First, I want to thank Judge Margia for taking time today to come and, and be a part of this. Uh, I have known her for a very long time in her service, and it's an honor to have here, her here um, to, to take the oath, to deliver the oath on my behalf. Uh, it's really uncommon for me to, to work from notes, but I think it's important today because there's a lot of things I want to make sure that I express. First, I want to begin by thanking my friends who have stood by me through this process. Uh, you've challenged me, you've inspired me, and believed in me. And together, I believe that we've overcome a challenge that many would have said was unlikely, if not impossible. So we did this together, and I'm thankful for you. To my staff, volunteers, and supporters, my words could never match my gratitude for your selflessness, the kindness and dedication that you've shown throughout the campaign, behind the scenes to do the work that makes candidates who they are and brings them to office to give them the opportunity to serve. And I thank you so much. I see so many faces out here that were with me in 2012 as well as in 2016, and I'm, I'm very grateful for your support and friendship. To my colleagues in the public safety arena, I want to thank you for the time that we spent together during my previous career and tell you that I'm honored to have the chance to work with you again as a colleague to lead law enforcement organizations on behalf of this community. There's nothing more important to our families than our safety and our health and the law enforcement responsibility is one of the greatest. So I'm thankful that you've welcomed me in the manner that you have to serve with you. As a matter of fact, my good friend, Chief Jerry Williams, is in the back of the room there. She's recently appointed as a chief of police for the Phoenix Police Department. She and I have known each other since we were rookies, and she has led by example. To, to have the chance to work with her moving forward is an honor for me. I also want to acknowledge Phoenix uh, Fire Chief Kara Kalkbrenner, who's here today. She and Chief Williams, two female leaders in public safety in the nation. I think Arizona is the only place where we have a major metropolitan city where we have two strong female leaders to lead the two public safety offices. So please give them a round of applause. There are many dignitaries here today, so I'm going to make sure that I do my best not to leave anyone out. But my good friend, a city council member from Avondale, Lorenzo Sierra, I believe is here today. 
Queen Creek Mayor Barney, Youngtown Mayor LaVault, Buckeye Mayor Meck, Carefree Mayor Peterson, and Tolleson's new mayor, my old friend Anna Tovar. I want to thank you for your service and tell you that I'm excited to have the chance to work with you on behalf of your communities to do more to ensure that we're not only providing safety, but that we have a strong partnership and that we're in this effort together to build a stronger Maricopa County. Supervisor Gallardo, I believe, is here today from the Board of Supervisors. And to the rest of the board who uh, may not have been able to attend tonight, since the election night, they have been overwhelmingly supportive and helpful in this transition, which is overwhelming. Um, I'd like to recognize the fine men and women of the Maricopa County Sheriff's Office. You see many of them in the back of the room in uniform, some in civilian clothes. These are the men and women that have been serving in that office for many years, have put their lives on the line to dedicated service on behalf of this community. And to have the chance to join them today and be a part of the family that already exists is an honor for me, and I want to thank them for the service that they've given and for the service that we will give collectively together. So please give them a round of applause. <laughs> and last but by no means least is my family, my parents, my sister, my niece are here today, a seat at the table here, my wife Veronica and my son Austin. Many of you in the room already know them all well. And you know my story, uh, that I would not be here with you today if not for them. Um, they're the strength that when you go through a, a political campaign and you go home at the end of a long day, they remind you why this fight is so important. Because it's not just about my own family, but it's about your families. So please give them a round of applause. I think it's important to point out that I'm a man of faith, and for all of us, regardless of what our faith is or our beliefs, it's important to know why you do what you do. And for me, during a, when I faced challenges during the campaign, I always reflected back as to why I was doing this, what was important, and it was never about me. It was about the chance to serve again. Uh, so I want to thank my Lord for giving me this opportunity. So now that the thank yous are out of the way, this is the first time in many years for me that I woke up and put a uniform on. And although this one looks a little different than the one I wore previously, I have to say I make this look good. <laughs> and I wear it with great pride, like the men and women that you see in the room here. To have a chance to wear the uniform and this badge, put a gun on your side knowing that it's there for a purpose and you hope to never have to use it, and to go out in the community in service to try to keep others safe is truly an honor and a privilege. So when I put this uniform on this morning, it reminded me of the importance of what this badge represents and the men and women who wear the uniform. So I'm honored to wear this uniform with you, men and women. Thank you. Oh, thank you. My very good friend, Cortez Colt alum, Mayor Greg Stanton. <laughs> See, my wife's keeping me on track, which is always very important. Um, and I am going to say, Mayor Stanton has not only been a good friend, but he is relentless. And I can tell you that not only did he support me 2012 and 2016, but on election day, I wish I had his energy because he took me to the polls and he was working people over to make sure that I was, was a, the sheriff of this county. So forgive me, Mayor Stanton, you know that I love you. You're a good man. I want to speak to a couple of things. I just spoke about this badge and this uniform, what's special about it. And, and I hope that my numbers are accurate. But I want everyone to recognize that 18 employees of the Maricopa County Sheriff's Office that wore this uniform gave their lives in service of this community. There are over 3,000 employees in the sheriff's office that serve sworn capacity as detention officers and civilians. And they come from the communities and the families just like we do in this room here. They leave their families in the beginning of the day to go in service and go home to their families at the end of the night. And when they do that, they do it with a great sense of pride to serve and to protect and to serve in many capacities. And I want us to always remember that although we hold different roles and responsibilities within the community, we are one community. 
and we need to recognize that these men and women have families, have their own personal issues and the things that go on in their lives, yet they're willing to sacrifice every day on our behalf. And that's why I'm so honored to have this opportunity again. As I look around this room of my friends and family, as I stated earlier, as a man of faith, I know there are many faiths, many backgrounds, many cultures, and we all take pride in who we are and where we come from. But ultimately, I think we all agree on one thing, that we live in the United States because it's the greatest nation in the world. And when we live in the United States or we come here to visit and those who pursue citizenship, we do it because we have an agreement, an understanding. And that understanding is that our governance, our laws, the things that we live by in this country matter to us. They're what separate us from other countries where there are challenges beyond ours. And we all agree that we have to enforce, abide, and believe in these rules and laws. Because that's what makes this nation special and keeps us safe. This is what's most defining. And for, in order for this community to move forward in a healthy way, and even as I reflect across the nation, see the challenges in law enforcement in some communities, we have to recognize that we are one. And those that we face that want to do harm to our families, take our property, hurt our children, the only way that we'll be stronger and address this issue is if law enforcement and the community at large come together and recognize and appreciate what is special about us and what is unique about us, but that collectively we are still one community. I want to share just a brief story that occurred during my campaign. Because as you know, as I stand up here in uniform and you see the other sworn officials, we're all familiar with what a police officer or a deputy does when they go on the street and we appreciate the sacrifice. But as I mentioned earlier, there's a division within the sheriff's office that does not get the recognition or the support that it should. And that's the detention side and the civilians. These are men and women that go to work every day into what is basically a confined space, a controlled environment with block walls, steel doors. It's not a comfortable environment. It's an environment that doesn't smell good, doesn't feel good, and it's not welcoming. And although I'll acknowledge that a lot of men and women who are incarcerated are good people who made bad decisions, those environments are still environments that are filled with a criminal element, people paying a penalty. Many of those men and women incarcerated have drug addiction or mental illness or violent by nature. It's a very unsound, unsafe, and oftentimes unhealthy environment. Yet these detention officers go to work every day trying to keep order and control in that environment, trying to keep those inmates safe while still protecting themselves. It is a job that does not get the level of appreciation or support that it should because it's not something we see on the front page of the news unless something goes wrong. But at the end of the day, these are the people that keep inmates incarcerated safely so that we can attend events such as these safely. So the Maricopa County Sheriff's Office consists of a lot of different roles and responsibilities. No one more important than the other. But it is time that we started telling those stories so that we understood where the sacrifices occur. So during my campaign, not much of a Facebook guy, but I did have someone reach out to me on Facebook, and it was a detention officer. Her name was Sandy. And she asked if we could speak. So when I had time, I actually I did reach out to her. And she didn't ask for favor. She didn't ask for anything for herself. What she expressed to me was she understood that she went to work every day in an environment that was not very welcoming, that she does not expect to be paid tremendously, but that when she and her colleagues go to work every day, they felt unappreciated, that there was a lack of morale. And if I could do any one thing for the detention side, it is to focus on improving morale for the men and women whose names and faces we never see unless we've done something wrong. It's a pretty simple request, and I'll do my best as sheriff to address that issue. But I'm going to challenge this community to address that issue, to recognize that although we've seen things in our own community and others where law enforcement or others have misrepresented the power, the authority, the privilege we've been given, but ultimately, the majority of the men and women work very hard on our behalf. And the more appreciation and support we show to ensure that they're trained and given the tools and resources to be safe and effective, the better the morale will be, 
and the safer the entire community will be. Because you know when you go to work how you feel about your day, when you're feeling good and you're more productive, or if you're feeling unwelcomed or unappreciated, it makes for a long day. It's time we turn the page and focused on a community where we all come together, as I said earlier. I want to talk just briefly about why I am the sheriff. We know that the Maricopa County Sheriff's Office has faced challenges in the past decade or more. We know that there are issues related to the court where monitors are now part of the process to ensure that we're meeting the rule of law, that we're acting ethically and with integrity and professionally. It's not an easy challenge. And for a lot of the men and women of the organization, there's disappointment because they are better, they know better, they feel better, but certain decisions adversely impacted the course of their career. This is a top priority for me, to restore, I don't want to say professionalism because I believe it already exists, but a reputation that's deserving of those doing the job. But we can't ignore that it's going to take time. The problem didn't occur overnight and we won't fix it overnight. So I hope that when you speak with your family and friends, you preach patience, you preach understanding, you recognize that as humans we'll make mistakes, but we'll work hard to be transparent and correct those mistakes so that we can all benefit. But it will be a long road and we're in this together. So as you're here with me tonight and through the campaign, I hope that you'll stay by my side and your new friends in the room speak highly of them, get to know them better, and be a support for a better Maricopa County. I believe the last chapter in the Sheriff's Office is closed, and the new chapter will be written and defined by our actions. Our actions will be those where this community, regardless of where you come from or the color of your skin or your religion or ethnicity, will be irrelevant. It will be about love and compassion and support in a serious, determined focus on keeping this community safe and holding criminals accountable to ensure, as I stated earlier, that the reason that we love the United States of America and abide by these laws and rules in the Constitution is because it's what separates us from others. But when we look in the mirror, it's a reflection of who we are and what we stand for. So this problem will not be overcome by our efforts alone. It'll be by a partnership with everyone in this community. So I will tell you that as the 37th, 38th, 37th Sheriff of Maricopa County, it is an honor and a privilege, and I thank you.